warning. This radio show contains strong language, excessive use of alcohol and tobacco products, a whole lot of bullshit and nudity. We here at WBWalker.com are not responsible for any lewd behavior, recklessness, illegal acts, or unwanted pregnancies directly caused by listening to this radio show. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, friends, on tonight's episode of the Old Soul Video Show, me and old brother Coach Wall here is going to salute his hometown. How about you tell him where you're from? Well, that would be the sprawling metropolis of Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Population, I 
and Google said Speedy Creek 16,604. But you know, this when you do a salute, it's usually the part where you take your hat and throw it up in the air. Mm -hmm. But your hat's too damn nice, and I'll tell you what I'm worried about. I'm worried about if I throw this open road up and get some air under it, it might sprout some wings and go looking for some IPAs. So I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to throw it up in there. So I'll let my boys do that one. Oh man! All right. All right. That's good. <laughs> All right. We're here. We might as well. Be Creek. <laughs> Well, friends, the first National Bank of Dingus time is at 9.30 right about now. Got a brother of mine down here, old Speedy Creek Zone, old brother Cody Wall here, going to pick us some songs. It's been, what, Cody, about two years since you've got to come down to Dingus. Give or take, yeah, somewhere and, uh, around there. First time that uh, we've got to do any video stuff, and mm -hmm. I'll talk more about it later, but uh, a big part of how the video show come to be was this fella right here brainstorming for me. But like I said, it means the world to me to have Brother Coulter back down here again. So, yeah, Brother, what do you want to pick for, sir? Well, um, how about, uh, I'll start with something new. And something I think you'll like, man. Because uh, I know one of my one of the things that whenever our paths uh, first cross, is I kind of recognize right away that uh, uh, you, like myself, you appreciate a lot of older music. Mm. A pretty decent record collection here under the pew and spilling out everywhere else. Yeah, probably a few more than Fallon probably would like for me to have. As a... <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, I know you, you appreciate your music history, certainly when it comes to country and western stuff. And uh, for a long time I've kind of wanted to write my own uh, Blue Yodel tribute to uh, Jimmy Rogers and there's so many great uh, there's so many great tribute albums to Jimmy Rogers already between uh, Haggard and you know Lefty and everybody. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to write my own Blue Yodel deal and um, I sat down one day and wrote this as kind of a fun, silly little thing. And I don't really have a name for it, but uh, it'll be on the next record whenever that comes out. But you got a room it's, full of railroaders, so I guarantee you. Well, it's it's a uh, it's kind of a. Um, I'll just play it for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I think I might maybe call it the uh, Rancher's Blue Yodel, but anyways, it goes like this. Got my bread all rationed and my beans cut into halves. Got my bread all rationed and my beans cut into halves. Got that old cow bagging, waiting on that old cow to calve. Oh, the lay, oh, low, I did, oh, lay. Well, we calve in the spring and we ship them in the fall. Calve in the spring and we ship them in the fall. Come a winter, find me digging through the pockets of my coveralls. Oh, to lay, oh, to load, oh, oh, to lay tea. Got a hole in my fence. My pears are headed for town Got a hole in my fence And my pears are all a walking the town Somebody seen them at the station Buying tickets for that old greyhound Oh, the lay Oh, love Well, man, I've been working.
working on that, you know, Jimmy had a real specific yodel where he, he pretty much threw it in that kind of 12 bar blues thing. And I've been listening to, uh, I remember the first time I heard, um, what's the Haggard one? Another, another train, another, another time, time yeah. same train, another time, something like that. He's on that caboose. Yeah, he's yeah. doing the pose off the, off the caboose there. And, he's got and, the picture of Jimmy on the caboose and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. The brakeman's outfit. And, mm -hmm. uh, Ever since I heard that, I've been working on that kind of Jimmy Rogers style yodel, and I guess I've recently written kind of a bunch of songs that are, you know, Western lifestyle ranch and stuff, and, and they could be accused of being a little romanticized. So I kind of wanted to write something that was more poking fun about, you know, yeah. this uh, far from lucrative industry <laughs> to get into, I guess. But that was just kind of, you know, having fun with that one. When it comes to people that's writing, you know, country and western type music, I mean, hands down, there ain't nobody doing doing what you're doing, brother. You are absolutely, absolutely killing it. It uh, the latest record. I remember when I first listened to it, I was just like with everything you've ever done, I was just blown away. So I, I appreciate it, man. I mean, you've everything you've put out has been, I mean, gold in my opinion. You've you've absolutely wore it out. Well, you know, there's so many, uh, there's just so many different kinds of country music out there and they're all pretty important I think to the uh, well you know the evolution of the genre or whatever you want to call it so uh, try to cover as many bases as we can but I'm glad you like them man somebody's got to like them you know, if you're ever looking for somebody to like it you go ahead and bet your bottom dollar I've always liked everything you've ever done I appreciate you buddy <clears throat> are these the same boots from uh when we were at the Ryman deal? No, well, they're the same style, <laughs> but those, like the ones... Those you were had, your granddad's, weren't they? Well, they were old. They were, yeah. But they, uh, I kind of run into the same problem you had. I was kind of doing yeah, the, the bottoms going on, yeah. yeah. So I had to, uh, <laughs> probably, I never really took them to get them re or nothing, but it's the exact same style boot, it's just a different boot. Right. Those boots, they're over there somewhere beside that fireplace. We, I got so much shit piled up, you can't see them, but I... I still got them. They're more of just a decoration type thing. Now. <laughs> as long as you still got them, man. But that's something I think about all the time when I see them or if I have to go move them to do something. I think about, that's my rhyme. But well, I, I felt bad, and to give a little background for anyone listening, uh, uh, gosh, I don't know how long ago that was, but whenever the first time I got to play at Ryman, it was a very religious experience for me, and, and uh, you and Justin Payne tagged along, and I was real happy to have you guys there, too. And... Uh, this guy looks at me and he goes, would you wear my boots on stage? <laughs> and I looked at your feet and thought, I don't know if that's a good fit, man. I, I, I immediately, I think the first thing I thought of in my head was, I'm going to put those things on and try to walk out of the Ryman for the first time and just eat shit and like bust my ass on, on the Grand Ole Opry stage. <laughs> but, so I turned you down, <laughs> if I remember correctly. I think I went, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> it was pretty quick, too. It wasn't like, eh, I'll think about it. Yeah, it was like, yeah. <laughs> but I remember years after that, we sat there one night, and we was probably both about half drunk. He said, you remember when you offered to to let me wear your boots? I said, yeah. He said, sometimes I wish I would have. I remember you yeah, me there. Well, it, it probably would have made for a better story <laughs> if I had, but. Yeah, that was, that's hands down. I mean, I've got to do some pretty cool stuff, and a lot of it's been focused around you and stuff. But that fella that uh, that Mary had got to take pictures and stuff that day is mm -hmm. Michael something. I can't remember his name, but he took that real great picture from up on the balcony of, of the yeah. stage and stuff. And yeah. you know, you're out there, and the lights kind of shining down on you, and you can see me and Justin Payne over there in the corner, and that always meant the world to me. It was a special night for everybody. I think it was a good pretty, time. Pretty cool. Brother, you want to pick us another one here? Yeah. Um, well, you got a, anything you want to hear? We'll do the old Camaro song. It's been a minute. I could try. I was about to. Um, we were talking about that Hank Williams record. Yeah, that'd be a good one. I've tried to learn some of the. Here, let me see if I can.
Let's see here how this goes. Old Doc Holliday with ten in the town. Old Doc Holliday was ten in the town. He heard the word was going around. That plain bill kid gonna shoot him down. Won't you have another drink on me? Doc Holliday, have another drink on me. Doc Holliday, have another drink on me. Dr. Holliday, the kid ain't gonna shoot you down. Old Doc Holliday was leaning on the stand. Pistol on his hip and a red eye in his hand. It come a wobbling down the street. Old Doc said, Kid, this ain't no way to me. Won't you have another drink on me? Doc Holiday, have another drink on me. Doc Holiday, have another drink on me. Dr. Holiday, kid ain't gonna shoot you down. He drew his pistol and docked it too. Doc out drew him, shot him through. The kid looked up, said, Don't shoot me no more. The doctor smiled and empty his 44. Won't you have another drink on me? Doc Holiday, have another drink on me. Doc Holliday, have another drink on me. Dr. Holliday, the kid ain't gonna shoot you down. Have another drink on me. Doc Holliday, have another drink on me. Doc Holliday, have another drink on me. Dr. Holliday, the kid ain't gonna shoot you down. Man, you just made my. Do you, you remember I sent that you to you? sent that to me, and it's funny because I had been uh, at my buddy's ranch in Texas, and, and we had listened to that album, I think, a few days before we got back. Um, you got kind of a little outdoor kitchen there coming out of this plywood bunkhouse. It's probably about the size of the, the barn and grill here um, that I kind of was living, just living in there whenever I was around. And uh, we had just listened to that record because he brought it up, and we were talking about it. And then a few days later, I think you sent me that. Yeah. That song, so it kind of felt like uh, I don't know, serendipitous, I guess. But a lot of times, you know, I hear certain things that that make me think of you and stuff, and I thought Coder could kill that song. Well, of course, it, it made sense coming from you uh, whenever you sent that the my friend uh, Coulter Wall deal. That was based off the thing yeah. that that Wyatt or yeah. gave to Doc Holliday, which he really did do that. I think that historically gave him a he made him like a little. Well, to where I had got that printed from, the, deal. I guess he had, he had done that in real life, but on Tombstone, when, when White Earp comes to the hospital, you know, he docks like, what are you doing here, White? I don't want you to see me like this. Mm -hmm. and he just lays that book down on his chest, you know, and he talks to him for a second and walks off. And Me and you had talked about your dad one time. You were talking about how that's your dad's favorite movie. I've seen that movie more times than any other movie that I can think of yeah. because uh, I, I watched it growing up, and I, still, I love it to this day, you know. I always, when I get you coming down or doing anniversary shows or whatever, I try to think of kind of something special to do for you. And a, a sister of mine out of uh, Fort End, New York, uh, Kelly Brooken, she's an amazing artist and stuff, and I had this idea to do that. So I actually got on e or Etsy, I think, and somebody had made like a replica of the, of the, of the book that, yeah, a little that, booklet that, that he White gave. give Doc. So I sent her that book. And I told her what I wanted her to do and like looking at the actual picture and look at what she done, it's just like, it's perfect. Spot on, the yeah. font and everything. I remember thinking that too when I got it because I've seen the movie so many times and thinking like, this looks just like the yeah. one that, you know, Kurt Russell gives to uh, Val Kilmer when he's yeah. sitting there in the hospital bed right before he dies and they're trying to play cards and all that. But uh, yeah, it's since become, I think, probably my favorite Hank Jr. record, so. I don't know if you remember this or not, when I first bought, <coughs> excuse me, when I first bought this hat, I had, uh, had to take a picture and showed you and you said, Kind of look like Doc Holliday with that hat on. <laughs> so that's kind of, I guess, full circle. You had the, you were a little more cleaned <laughs> up back then. Yeah, a little scruffy right now. Yeah. 
He was a little more cleaned up back then, but it's yeah, funny, about 19 years old. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't cleaned up. I just couldn't go. <laughs> weird. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think what else I can play that I know I know. <laughs> uh, oh, throw one at me. Throw one at me that ain't the John Byers thing because I can't remember that. You want to pl play one off your self title record, anyone? Oh, since you're in West Virginia, can you do that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I could do that. Still play that one with the band. It's a long, though. I'm going to get bored sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play it with you, I promise. You mean this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> I met a little girl in Saskatoon She was beaming bold and beautiful Higher than the moon Before I could profess she left too soon she spoke were enough to make me blue she said I know just what you're wishing and two folks in our condition we never leave this bar room with our pride so go about your earthly mission don't trust no politicians you look to yours and I will look to mine I met Nashville honky tonkin queen and the caress her amber lips was reserved for Jim Bean. I took her by the arm, she made a scene. The whiskey was yet to dull her tongue, it seemed. She said, I know just what you're wishing. Two folks in our condition we never leave this bar room with our pride So go about your earthly mission Don't trust no politicians You look to yours and I will look to mine Steel solo there. We'll have to make do. <laughs> exactly. Now, West, by God, Virginia is where I'm bound. She's as wild and she's as wonderful as any girl I've found. To keep me just as long as I'm around and I never have to hear that awful sound Well I know just what you're wishing And two folks in our condition We'd never leave this bar room our pride to go about your earthly mission don't trust no politicians you look to yours and I will look to mine you look to yours and I will look to mine Good, man. You know, I remember.
remember uh, the first time I came over to this part of the world uh, and it was um, reading the sign. And you get over to the West Virginia side mm. uh, wow. the, uh, the river there and, and I thought, man, that's that's real neat. And, you know, the alliterations there and could be cool on a song. And I don't think I, I think it was probably a subconscious thing at the time. I don't really remember, but uh, snuck it into that one. <laughs> I'm glad you did. It's not a bad slogan you guys got down here. Yep. Could be worse. Could be a you, lot worse. You know what the slogan was? Swift Current for a long time was called the Frontier City. That was our slogan, which is, I think, pretty cool. And they changed it somewhere along the way to uh, where life makes sense. So at least you don't have that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who who who, decide, who made the call. Now, but I think the Frontier City might have been a little better. You know, something I have people ask me all the time is, you know, with with because two artists a lot of people associate me with. You know, that I got to play early on before they got to do a lot is you and Tyler. I mean, I, I get asked questions about you all the time. And like with Tyler, I mean, it's kind of, it shouldn't be super shocking to people because he lives about, an, he grew up like an hour from here. Yeah. But, you know, I have people all the time, how in the hell did you come to know Coder Wall? <laughs> the internet, and, man. And uh, <laughs> I remember I had, I had heard, uh, it was one of them brewery session songs. Yeah. And back, I mean, when I first listened to you, there's like four videos of yours on YouTube. The two mm -hmm. brewery sessions, Jess, Musical Car, the karaoke <laughs> with it. And uh, they had one that I remember you was like sitting out by like a garden or something. Like there was like yeah. a creek running by you. Yeah, or those were like all that. done pretty much, well, the brewery sessions excluded. Those were all done right around the time I, I did a, my first ever tour. And it was just a Canadian tour that I did with a buddy of mine. We didn't have managers, booking agents or anything. We kind of just went out and did it ourselves. And uh and that's when most of those videos were shot because we had kind of scheduled these deals where we were going to do some live sessions for some people with cameras. And uh, and I'm sure they're all still out there. I see. I was searching through your I stuff the other day. I, I wouldn't the, dare to go find them because I'm sure it would I be embarrassing. The, I seen the musical car one the other day, <laughs> so it is out there still living. I remember being sick as a dog in that guy's car <laughs> somewhere in, on the east coast of Canada, I think. It was maybe New Brunswick or something. He's driving you like through a suburb or something. Yeah, like it that. was. Uh, that was interesting, <laughs> to say the least. But I, I still remember, you know, the first time I heard you, I reached out to you. And I don't think of the time you might. Be, I mean, you may have one, but like when I typed in "Colder Wall" on Facebook, it brought up your private Facebook, and mm -hmm. I remember adding you and messaging and asking you about playing you on my podcast, and you was all for it and stuff. And, mm. I, I don't know if I was, I probably had to have been drunk. And I was like, hey, what's your phone number? And because uh, you still lived at home at the time. Yeah. And uh, I remember me and you having all these conversations and stuff. And I do remember, I know I was definitely drunk when I asked you about playing a show in Huntington, West Virginia, and you live in freaking Saskatchewan. And, and somehow or another, it worked out. And uh, I'm glad it did. You never know really what's going to happen that, or who you're going to meet. I think things are meant to happen. I really do. I guess so. I really think that. Yeah. Brother, what you want? What you feeling like next? I don't know. Um, is, is old Bob Fudge one that you've played recently? Or? You're asking for the the long one. <laughs> well, I don't know where <laughs> we're at time wise on this one, so thank you, Viv. Relatively shorter one, maybe. I could do Bob Fudge. That's a good anti song. I'll try. I'll try to remember it all. True story, by the way. Guy. You can go see his grave, it's somewhere up there in Montana, I think. See how this goes here, I don't know. It's been a minute, but Ian's gonna be up there, Ian Tyson will be up there at his ranch in Longview in Alberta. Just he'll know something's up, he'll be cussing by name. My <laughs> name is Bob Futch. I was born in Texas, Lamb Passage County, back during the war. Smallpox and Comanches took most of my family, left my poor mother and my brothers and me. So I headed north to ride for the blockers. They were contracting herds 
for the Montana range in the spring of the year 82 he left old lamb passes with 2,000 steers for the little big horn crossing our trail there were many great rivers all to be crossed not a bridge would we find in the cold rolling waters and the wild plunging cattle there was many a young man who took leave of his life Crossed at Dome Store on the Ark to the Indian Nations. My geography right here. There was blood on the rocks where them cowboys had died. Then it's on the Fort Dodge. On the Arkansas River Where gamblers and whores All greeted us there And the great snow-capped peaks We're on our left side now For many miles great silent land when I first saw Montana I knew I would love her I would ride her great ranges till the end of my day well, they're all cut and dry now trails are all gone I've been in the Yellowstone Park in an automobile I can still see them swimming boys I can still hear them running I came off of the trail when Cowboys was king My name is Bob Fudge I died in Montana something yourself it's easy to remember stuff but i don't know how the hell you all remember all that's, of them words that's there. a tough one man that's right up there with uh, well because the thing about that song that i think it took me a while to realize probably took me until i recorded it to realize that none of it rhymes yeah there's no rhyme scheme whatsoever so in that whole song. Kind of help you along so it's with it, yeah. it gets a little tough it's kind of like um well even mr mud and mr gold rhymes i remember trying to remember that here in this very building yeah. a few years back but that's another one with a thousand words in it where it's like gosh i don't know if i can remember all this brother i'm gonna it's all right with you i'm gonna get up and stretch my legs for a minute my back unacceptable <laughs> well, you bet man no that's one thing since to my extent when i sit for any a little bit of time, I can't hardly, I gotta. Well, get up and, and stretch your bones stretch out a minute, bit there, bud. We'll be back with you here on the Old Soul Video Show here in just a minute. Don't go away. After this paid programming, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> uh.
Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the Old Soul Video Show here. My brother Coder Wall has been gracious enough to, to hang around Dingus a little bit longer. Going to play us a few more. But uh, before he plays this one, I'm going to tell a little bit of a, a story real quick. Um, back in uh, on August the uh, 23rd, 2019, I got on, in a uh, pretty good little accident on the railroad. And uh, long story short, I knew pretty quick that it had done some... Uh, pretty good damage to me and stuff, not just physically, but mentally. And uh, it meant the world to me because the day that you was, because you had just done sound check at Austin City Limits, and uh, you had found out that I'd been in an accident, you called me and was checking on me and stuff, and uh, I think you could kindly tell that I was having a pretty tough time at things and everything. And like I said, it just wasn't, and all these guys here know it just wasn't physically. I mean, it continues still to be, you know, I dealt with just like you had said when, when you dedicated song to me he said you know it's about not being able to do what you love and when you realize or think that potentially what you do ain't you ain't gonna get to do it no more you know it's just this scary thing and uh, like I said I was in a real bad way and when you done that song it uh, absolutely just it, it helped me so much and I just want to let you know how much I appreciate that and if you want to do that one right there it'd be, yeah, man. It'd be in the world to me I can do that what do you say it's written about some on, on one hand uh, rope or throwing a lasso at a well, I've had to. In lot. I've had to explain this song a few times to some <laughs> folks since I put it out because um, I guess there's pretty some pretty obscure terminology that anyone outside of the know probably wouldn't be too familiar with. But uh, it's just a song I wrote, um, you know, uh, back when the world was still operational and uh, we could play regular gigs and tour around. Um, I travel usually with a little rope, a little like you know, uh, just a little team rope, head and rope, uh, no bigger than 35 feet or something like that. It was pretty small, but I'd pack that thing around in our van with all the gear and stuff, and in between uh, load in, load out, play the show, blah blah blah, all that stuff. I'd kind of practice roping because uh, um, I'm not very good. <laughs> So I would practice with the rope and all these different shots, you know. Um, and there's this one shot that's uh, it's called a hula hand, and it's kind of a backhanded thing, and uh, it's used a lot of time. Uh, I guess uh, if they're if they're catching horses out of a out of a you know Bermuda Bermuda or a rough string or something, they'll use it as kind of a horse rope because you can kind of uh, cover a lot of ground with it, and it's a great big loop and. Um, if you're throwing it from your feet, you don't really swing it, so you're not going to scare horses and stuff like that. But anyways, uh, I would be practicing that shot, the hula hand shot at the motels and stuff on them little cigarette Like thing. the arms, the, yeah. Yeah, you know, those <laughs> little pillar things that you put your cigarette out in, and I would practice at the hotels sometimes if I was not too drunk or whatever, you know, or just bored. Or practice anywhere, really, just where if there was space enough and pavement or room. And it, you know, it's basically this song is kind of my wannabe cowboy song because I don't I don't claim to be a cowboy, but uh, my heroes have my heroes have always been cowboys, like the Raymond Jennings tune. And so I kind of wrote this about maybe wishing that I could be doing something else at the time other than playing shows, which I, of course I love. But you know, it's just about basically kind of longing for a way of life that or a lifestyle that uh, at the time I was sort of not really getting to do too much of. And I thought that, you know, the, the common denominator between your situation and mine was that we were both worried about not, not really being able to pursue a passion, you know. But anyhow. One month on the road will leave you wondering How any man could ever want for more But three months on the road will leave you stumbling Falling through another hotel door Throwing who hands at the holiday and haven't put 
boot heel or belly since can remember when and I'll sing you all the songs of my working cowboy kin and it's back to throwing the hoolands at the holiday inn highway side Raising herd of cattle Folks round here pulled in a decent yield A view best taken in from the saddle I'm staring through this Dirty cracked windshield Throwing hula hands At the holiday and Haven't put boot heel to belly Since can remember when and I'll sing you all the songs of my Working cowboy kin Then it's back Throwing hula hands At the holiday inn If I'm paid well The tale I'll tell And sing and I seldom Pay a cent For my drinks Folks in here tonight, they think I'm a king. I'd trade it all for a double rigged saddle and a good pair of chinks. Throwing hula hands at the holiday and having to put boot heel to belly. Can remember when And I'll sing you all the songs Of my working cowboy kin And it's back to throwing hoolies At the holiday And it's back to throwing hoolands At the holiday Bed, man. Once again, I appreciate it. Yeah. It's when uh, they initially aired, like the live stream or whatever, I know that usually when, when stuff airs, especially where they made yours like into a, a double feature type show, I didn't know how much they would cut out or whatever. And uh, when we watched it, when it came on PBS, you know, I knew it was getting close. I was like, Phew, I wonder if they cut that part out or <laughs> left it in. If when they left it in there, immediately my phone started going freaking nuts people text me and hell yeah like, man yeah, i didn't really i mean i saw uh i saw it on youtube but I, you know we obviously didn't get i didn't watch it on tv um when it came out i might have caught some of it but uh it's one of those things it's kind of like googling yourself i guess where it felt weird to like turn try to turn the tv on and, oh yeah. better catch me <laughs> on the tv you know but uh that was a surreal deal i was i was uh admittedly you know shaking in my boots for that thing i was pretty nervous to play uh, acl but uh i'm glad we did i hope we can go back at some point so hopefully it'd be a little more comfortable up there because i was i felt pretty you know stiff as a board when they were whenever they turned those cameras on and all the lights come on and stuff it's uh it's the other thing whole other thing when they have it on you know tv i guess that's the thing with you just like i mean i know how much you like records and stuff so the first actual vinyl that you got to put out, you included me on. Yeah. And the first time you played the Ryman, you included me there. And the first time you played Austin City Limits, you had me on there too. So, but I just I appreciate all, everything you've always done for me. You well, think, man, so. it's a it's a two way street. You've uh, <clears throat> like you were talking about before. You know, it's pretty. It was pretty uh, 
kind of a funny thing for me to think. There's some guy way down in West Virginia where I didn't even know at the time if I could point to it on the map of the United States. But there's some guy down there, and he's playing my songs on his podcast. And, you know, at the time, uh, uh, certainly wasn't uh, well known in any circles, I don't think. So, uh, I don't know. It's a... Uh, that's all anyone can do in any kind of music community or any community at all is support each other, you know. That's it. Thank you. Speaking of that, I mean, I know a lot of you is going to be watching this episode. We're, we're colders on it, but uh, as you're watching this, this is episode seven. And I have six prior episodes. One of them I'm just showing off some of my records and stuff. But there's five other musicians that I've recorded so far. And uh, just check them out. I mean, there's so much good music out there. It, uh, like you said, I mean, I've always... Well, you're too humble to say it, WB, but I've known for a long time that uh, you've been breaking some some artists uh, long before, you know, anybody else that whatever they're trying to do, be on the scene or, or you know, on to the next big thing. You've had, a, you've had a few on there yourself that, you know, now they're on satellite radio or what have you, and, yeah. and uh, that's nothing to shake your stick at, man. That's just... Uh, it means the world to me for the first time. You can't day. teach good taste, I guess. Well, I mean, I've always, I, mean, I, I guess I'm, you know, I got a good, I mean, I hate to talk about myself or anything like that, but I've always been blessed to be able to, to find, which I, I always said, my only rule with my radio show is the only guidelines I go by is I won't play anything for anybody that I wouldn't want to listen to myself. And I mean, that's how I've always been. But Well, I'll tell you, when anytime any, somebody asks about you or if you come up in the conversation, I, usually the first thing I say is the guy's got his ear to the ground and uh, he's, uh, he's, He's not. Uh, it's not about what's trending or what's cool. It's just about the music, and that's always going to be a recipe for success. I think, and uh, and I think that's why uh, I'm sure that has a big part in why people tune into this deal. <laughs> when I was. I remember when I was growing up. You know, I just had this this mindset that everybody has something that they're meant to do, and I never knew what mine was until, you know. I started doing this podcast, and back before it was a podcast, just when it's on my website, hmm. and, and when people would let me know they appreciate it and stuff, I mean, I just thought, well, I finally found something I'm decent at, so I want to <laughs> keep on doing it. But I've been blessed. Like I said earlier, you know, you got many of you's heard I had gotten a little bit of trouble with the RIA about playing a couple songs out of thousands and thousands of songs. I had two songs that they had fought with, and uh, this this man sitting beside me right here, he. Uh, he let it be known that uh, how much bullshit he thought it was and stuff. And like with everything, you've always had my back. I remember when you had me on your record, when it first came out, there was somebody that said something <laughs> shitty about it on, on Twitter. And I remember you... Oh, there's you, always a few of those. You eat their, you eat their ass up over it. And oh, just stuff man. like that's always meant, meant the world to me. And uh, like I said, brother, I, I just, I'm so glad that, that you're back down here. And, uh, well, it's long overdue. Glad, glad I could make it, man. That's it. You want another tune? What are you thinking on next? Uh, maybe uh, I'll play an old one. I'll play an old one and then send it out to a certain special someone in the room that I'm pretty sure likes this tune. I hope, anyways. There's a place where the sun doth shine and the birds keep time with the pines up yonder. That's the home of my Caroline. She's dancing in the sky. old chains around my feet they're pulling me back down Caroline oh Caroline I'll be home just any old time the grave in the garden won't be satisfied so your name's next to mine My 
bones do break and my hands do shake As I lie in the wake of time's cruel slaughter But if I die before I wake Gone to see my Caroline Caroline, oh Caroline I'll be home just any old time The grave in the garden won't be satisfied Till your name is next to mine Caroline, my Caroline I'll be home just any old time The grave in the garden won't be satisfied Until your name is next to mine Like that when everybody's failing. Mm-hmm. Somebody's got to. <laughs> She's got uh, her Dodge Journey. When you you give her a CD years ago, mm-hmm. and it's still in the CD player in, in the in her in her Dodge. She still listens to it. Oh, that's sweet. That's real sweet. Yeah, that's one. You know, there's. It's funny how these songs that uh, that I've written, anyways, and I can't speak for others because. I'm, I don't know how it is for everybody, but you know, you write something and you make this thing and sometimes they kind of feel like maybe they, they don't age, as, some of them feel like they don't age as well as others to me, but that's one that I've, uh, you know, there's, there's certain songs, Travis will tell you, there's certain songs that I just don't think are very good that I've written in the past, but that's that one I've always been real proud of. I think that's a, that's a pretty decent song. And I remember I don't remember much about writing it, but I distinctly remember uh, hoping my my grandma would like it, and uh, you know that it would be something that uh, that she could listen to. My grandma Alice, and I'm pretty sure she does like it. So I'd call that one a success. But uh, I still enjoy. I always enjoy playing that one. Still, I, you know, a lot of them I get tired of. Get tired of playing after a while, but you know, you, you never know which tune people are going to really latch on to and what's going to be a big song for you or what's not and uh, some of them it's easy to get fed up with well, <laughs> but uh, over the years when I've had conversations with people about you that's one that probably gets brought up as many as as much as anything when people talk about their favorite song of yours well I think it's, it's a beautiful song I think it's a decent song and I was really lucky to have uh, Melanie um, Bell Plain uh, sing on that, do the harmonies. Who at the time, whenever she came in the studio, I didn't really know. I had just the first time I was meeting her, and we've since become good friends. Uh, she's another great, great songwriter, and great singer, and performer from uh, from back home in Saskatchewan. And uh, it was pretty cool to get her on there. And then you know, after that point, get to know her after she had you know come out and sang beautifully on a little song that I wrote. I was pretty humbled. So. It's a it's a special one for me. I, I'm I'm glad people like it. Well, there everybody in this room right now that uh, that's here to to get to listen a little bit. Uh, there are folks that if people listen or see my intro on the video show, everybody that is here is in that intro. And uh, oh, brother Harry Mitchell over here. Me and Harry, we've we've drunk many beers together over the years, <laughs> and. Uh, We've done plenty of karaoke, but I was going to tell a story. Do you remember that time that me and you oh karaoke together? And after we got done, that guy, walked, that promoter, walked up to me <laughs> and wanted to book me. He didn't say a damn word to you. Yeah, this guy came up <laughs> and was all about trying to get you on yeah. stage at whatever his venue was and, uh, and, and looked at me like I was like I had uh, <laughs> leprosy or something. But he yeah. was convinced this was the next big uh, yeah, the moose, star of the Grand Ole Opry right here. The Moose Lodge in Huntington. They, won't do that, <laughs> they did that. not care for my singing. <laughs> But they liked you sing whatever Hank song we tried to do. It was like we were doing the it, conversation. I it think. was terrible. <laughs> I, that's all I remember. It was it being just terrible. Because you didn't. I remember I was. We were both about half drunk, and I was like, "Come on, do it." You're like, "Hell no!" And I finally talked you into yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a couple beers later, and we ended up doing it. Brother, well, you. I know that you said you ain't played a whole lot in a while, so I'm just gonna throw stuff out there. And like you said, if you don't want, you I'll let you know if I'm not gonna play it. Well, here, I won't be here's shy. one that I know that you've done. I can think of at least two or three covers from this fella, so I'll just say his name and that to cover a couple. Okay, three songs. I see. I see what you're doing. Can you uh, can you do us a Roger Miller one? Oh, you bet. 
You want a funny Roger Miller or sad Roger Miller? Because I, I know a few of them. Or I can try to fake my way through a few of them. Well, honestly, if you don't care. I know you I know this I know the what you're talking about, the funny one, and I don't know there's, what you're talking about. There's the, plenty of uh, He's do, got plenty of both. Do the one that uh that you and Blake and done together. Can you do that? Oh uh My uncle was it My uncle used to love me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uncle used to love me, but you died. No, no. Mm, I don't know if I can, if I know the progression of that. Well, uh, I love everything Rogers ever. Me wrote, too. So just Hang on. Let me think now, because there's so many. Uh, <laughs> well, can you do the first uh, Roger Miller song that uh, I ever heard you do? I think you know what I'm talking about. The one that had that old, uh, old rope hanging behind you. That one? Sad one. The jail one. When they're in jail, I'll say. Oh, uh, Nottingham? Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck. I don't know if I remember that either. I'll tell you what. Let me do. I'll do medley. I'll play you medley. <laughs> That's perfect. We're all done plenty of them anyway. Well, I once had a sweetheart. The fairest of maidens. She outshined all others. That I'd known by far I had a friend big fella name a big Harlan Taylor Harlan had a rubber tire new shiny car oh the ways of the world and the wants of a woman if I figured them all out it would take many years the wants of a woman she fell for big heart I tried but in vain for to take my own life suddenly I had lost all my will to keep living she lost her desire to become my young wife oh the ways of the world and the wants of a woman, if I figured them all out, to take many years. Well, I wanted revenge, way late for Big Harlan, and I started wondering, what good would it do if a rubber tire knew shiny cars are ambition? And she can just have it. Big Harlan too Oh the ways of the world And the wants of a woman If I figured them all out It would take many years Hard, hard headed me Well I spoke out a turn once too often I'd be better off in my coffin, hard hitting me. Mm-hmm. Most of them are in E, so it's not too hard. <laughs> Can't roller skate in the buffalo herd. Can't roller skate in the buffalo herd. Can't buffalo in the roller skate herd. You can be happy if you've mind to. All you gotta do, put your mind to it. Knuckle down, buckle down, do it, do it, do it. Well, you can't go fishing in the baseball pool. You can't go fishing in the baseball pool. You can't go fishing in the baseball pool. You can be happy if you've mind to. of the world and the wants of a woman 
If I figured them all out, it would take many years. <laughs> so there's a medley for you, but I tried to cover as many as I, I can remember. <laughs> uh, King of the road. <laughs> Before we take another little break here, um, I know one that I had mentioned to you earlier. You said that you were pretty comfortable with doing. It's one that Connie had told me that uh, oh, yeah. to get you to do. That's right. I forgot. Uh, another Ian Tyson too. It's one a little more well known, I guess. So who all did? I think Tony Rice did a cut of this, and um, I know Bobby Bear did it. I think he had a hit with it, and a um, bunch of folks. But. One of the great uh, songs from the Canadian songbook, I guess. Where are we at time-wise, Justin? Lane? We got time for one more? You're at 56. No. Yeah, we got four yeah. minutes. Yeah, dude, why not? We rolling? Yes, yeah. sir. Never hit 17 when you play against Dealer, for you know that the odds won't ride with you. Never leave your woman alone when your friends are out. Steal her, she'll be gambled and gone like summer wages. And we'll keep. Rolling on till we get to Vancouver and the woman that I love, she's living there. It's been six long months and more since I've seen her. She may be gambled and gone like summer way. In all the beer parlors Down around Main Street Dreams of the season They're all spilled down on the floor And the big stands of timber Waiting there for falling And the hookers standing watchfully Waiting by the door Gonna work on the old towboats In my slippery city shoes Lord, I swore I would never do that again In the gray fog-bound straits Where the cedars stand watching I'll be far off and gone like summer wages. In all the beer parlors down around Main Street, the dreams of the season, they're all spilled down on the floor. And the big Stands of timber is waiting there for falling, and the hooker standing watchfully, waiting by the door. So never hit seventeen when you play against the dealer, for you know that the odds. Won't ride with you. Never leave your woman alone. When your friends are out, steal her, she'll be gambled and gone like summer wages. Years are gambled and gone like summer wages. Hopefully that one.
one turned out. We're gonna take us another break real quick. Yeah, I gotta pee. He's gonna pee and probably <laughs> go grab him a dart, maybe. Yeah, maybe smoke a dart outside. Of <laughs> but we'll be back here in a minute here on the Soviet Hill Show. Don't go away. <laughs> What do you say? Hey, old friends, welcome back here to the <laughs> old soul radio video. One of them old shows here. One of those things. One of them. Um, having a good time. Coder's been playing with some stuff, and uh, like I said, just I've had a blast. I've had an absolute blast, and can't wait to hear another. Well. Hey. Hell, <laughs> I'll do this at the request of our mutual friend, Justin Payne. Back there working all the bits and bobs and doodads, making sure we sound good. Well, you know we don't look good, so we yeah. at least need to try to halfway sound good. <laughs> Better than nothing. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see here. Be taking his time, drinking all the straight right, chasing it with red wine, heavy on his troubled mind, sweetly taking his time, trying to make it all right, taking on a woman. Taking on a woman He's tuning up the CB Can anybody hear me? Cause I'm headed down to number three I got dead lights to me Let's tuning up that old CB Hoping it will free me Thinking on a woman Thinking on a woman Singing sad songs, thinking how she's long gone. He's treating those that love him wrong, as ornery as the night is long. He's been singing sad songs, thinking how she's long gone, thinking on that woman. Taking on that woman Burning up the midnight oil A special brand of big rig toil It's enough to make your blood boil These mountain roads will prove my foil It's burning up that midnight oil Gonna shuffle off this mortal coil Thinking on a woman Thinking on a woman <laughs> It's funny though, that singing the last few lines of that 
trying to get over here today. I, had, I think I said to Travis at one point, like, I'd hate to be somebody driving a big rig around these roads. Yeah. But have an 18-wheeler on some of these switchback roads, man. I would be well, you've shitting seen my the pants. Of Dingus Mountain, that coal truck, it looked like they was putting it on a road back. Yeah, yeah. So we come through there, and I was like, it What's like going on? some bitches in the middle of the road. He was in the middle and of the road. And I was like, what? And I got up there, and I thought, what the hell is that? Because people around here, they just stop in the middle of the road all the time. <laughs> and I mean, just it's, it's pretty regular. But then when we went by, I seen them flashing lights, and I seen them putting that coal truck on the old road back so i don't know what happened to that old dude i hope he just broke down and didn't didn't wreck or nothing that's but. one of those things that you know having traveled around you think about stuff like that because growing up as you know i've told you many times it's it's pretty flat out there where i grew up in southwest saskatchewan that's where all them jokes come from about watching your dog run away all week and stuff like that and <laughs> on a, on a, my dad's favorite one is on a clear day you can see the back of your own head because it's just, you know, <laughs> Great Plains flat out there. Uh, so we don't have that problem with switchback roads, for sure, that you guys would have. I wouldn't want to be a trucker around here or hauling bad. a load through here. We got some bad ice storms like most of the country got there a few weeks back, and she had to call in, I mean, like six days, something like that. I mean, it was, it was bad. And it, uh, especially that mountain we come over, when it mm -hmm. gets bad, it's, it's pretty scary it's stuff. It's straight up and down, man. <laughs> I'm glad we were following you getting out here to the to the house. Well, you've done a good job because usually people that follow me, like I, I mean, I was driving slow, but even when I drive slow, like I'll have to come with stop and wait on people. But you was I was on your ass. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, I'm not losing him. <laughs> I looked back and I thought Dale Earnhardt was behind me for a minute. Yeah, Ricky Bobby back there following <laughs> you around. Shaking bake. <laughs> Shaking bake. I'm Ricky Bradley. But hell, uh, uh, you want to hear a, a prime tune? Yeah. I got old John Brown here, and like I've said for years on the radio show, and I've probably said a few times on the video show, John Brown turned me on to Chris Knight years ago, turned me on to John Prine, and by him doing that, especially That's a good with, friend right there. with Chris, it just amazed me there was music out there that good that, mm -hmm. that wasn't on the radio, and it opened up a big rabbit hole to me, and John's always looked out for me when it comes to music and stuff, and I know, you seen, what year was it you seen Prine? When you, you, you was real young, wasn't you? Yes, yeah, he was 72, 73, I was about 14, 15 years old. Mm. Well, I helped my sister move to college in Cincinnati. And she was looking in the Sunday paper, something to do, you know. She had to be school money, so what, something to do with something? And he was at a dinner theater. <laughs> and it was just him and his guitar on the stage about four oh, foot man. off the ground. Shoot. That's... Right after he put out, I don't know, his, probably his first album. It's probably, maybe his, he might have two albums out. He, but uh, all the songs that I knew, you know, all the Sam Song, Paradise, yeah. all the songs. All that stuff from, from the first record, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I bet it was probably around the time, because I don't know when he put that first album, that self-titled album out, but I think it was 72, 73-ish. Yeah, this is even, Maybe. I think this was in, around that time. Yeah. 73. There's some great songs on that. Man, yeah, perfect record. Yeah. Yeah, because I think after that, what he, after that he did um, the blue one where he's in that convertible, uh, 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 Sweet Revenge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll play. This is one that I'm pretty sure I'll be able to get through without forgetting. Um, <laughs> it's kind of one of his more obscure ones. Not well known, but it's one of my favorites. Always, uh, something about it just makes you feel good, I think. This one, for me, anyway. street I used to wander mm, shook my head and I made myself a bet there was all these things that I don't think I remember hey how lucky can one man get bronze my shoes and I hung them from the rear view mirror bronzed admiration in the blind spot of regret There was all these things That I don't think I remember Hey, how lucky Can one man get Thank you. 
about the day I walk down the street I used to wander. Mmm, shook my head and I lit my cigarette. There is all these things that I don't think I remember. Hey, how lucky can one man get? Hey, how lucky can one man get? Hell yeah. A little out of tune, but uh, I know uh, I've heard enough John Prine live albums to know that's <coughs> some. He he wasn't always right on the yeah. ball either. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when he was on the ball, he wasn't. Uh, R.I.P. Man, one of the, one of the greatest of all time for sure. Yeah, one of the the highlights of things I've got to do is I got to introduce him on stage one time. I was pretty. No shit. In Somerset, Kentucky. Really? I got. Was it for a festival? The Master Musicians. Master festival. Musicians. Okay. It was, it was pretty neat. That's uh. Didn't get to talk to him, shake his hand, or nothing. But as I was walking off, I turned you around. Got the and he was MC walking for him, on, man. So. Well, I I met him very briefly, and it was uh, was that in was that in uh, Louisville? Yeah. Um, at that show, I got the, the only time I ever opened up for him, but it was pretty surreal deal. And uh, like the Austin City Limits thing, I was terrified, you know. But uh, he wanted to make sure that me and him got to sing together, so he sent someone to come get me from my green room, which was felt like a mile away from where his green room was. Felt and like we walked walk the green mile. Literally. It felt like the green mile. Yeah. <laughs> the green room mile and uh i walked into his room and there he was and you know he's ever i think ever since he had that uh throat surgery he kind of always his head tilted a little bit uh, since he had the surgery with the throat cancer i guess back whenever that was and the, so he, you know i walked in there he is just like i've seen him in pictures and videos and stuff and was terrified and, and he i remember this he goes where are you from and i said i'm from just a little place you never heard of in southwest Saskatchewan. And he said, what? And I said, southwest Saskatchewan. He goes, I've never been there. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. That was it. After that, it was just all about that song. And I think we did the, I think we did Please Don't Bury Me uh, together. And then he called me out for the encore that they did, the encore of uh, uh, Paradise, of course. And uh, him and, and Fiona, his wife, they were out there. And, and I, I got to stand out and try to, do some harmonies on stage try not to you know shake too much because it's just yeah. terrified but that's a pretty surreal deal for me i was uh i was like a kid that day you know Guaranteed. yeah i'm sure you felt similar oh, yeah. getting to introduce him that was probably <laughs> like, the second best introduction i ever done remember the one i did for you at the basement the well, one where you where everyone was mad because it, it never ended. Yeah, I talked <laughs> like about, I cut half your set. It was about half the set. <laughs> it was supposed to be a real short set, and I think you talked for about fifteen about minutes, twenty five times. <laughs> <laughs> At what point you went? Uh, I can't remember exactly how it was. It made me laugh so hard. Something about. Uh, I ain't trying to, I'm not putting down anybody in Nashville because it was a, at the basement in East Nashville, I guess. I'm not putting down anyone here, but I don't know you. <laughs> and I know this guy, and he's all right, or something to that effect. But like <laughs> that was a fun week. Uh, but wouldn't it, have had it any other way, man. That's it. I remember that somebody filmed a video, and I'm up here, and like I'm, I've got that thousand yard stare, and I'm going back and forth, and you're standing behind me laughing the whole time. <laughs> that somebody said that it was, uh, they felt like it's your eulogy. That's what they said. <laughs> oh man, but. Uh, Master Musician Festival, the same festival that I got to introduce Prime. Yeah. I, I got turned on to, I, which I knew he musically, but I got turned on to the artwork by a guy named Josh, Mid Josh Mitchum. And he, he done a, a songwriter series for me. And up there in that corner, I got old Hank Williams and Fred Rose. And to the right, almost to the edge of the door, I got Towns and Billy Joe. Yeah. Then beside the Cody, I got Prime, you, and Tyler. And over in the corner, I got Roger Miller and the old Rooster. And that's favorite songwriter so it means the world to me that you've well you've the, you've uh, lumped you've lumped me in with a bunch of guys that are way better than me <laughs> so i appreciate that <laughs> i always appreciate everything you do um since we're uh i know i've, I've heard a few people say a few things and i know this is a song you've i hope you still remember how to do it is there any way that you'd do some sleeping on the blacktop 
Oh man, I'm not allowed to forget that one. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let you. No, it's put gas. It's put get, puts gas in the tank. <laughs> <clears throat> what is uh, one of my favorite Downs quotes is on the Hartworth Highways before he plays Poncho on Lefty and he goes I'll play you a medley of my hit <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel about this one <clears throat> medley of my hit singular <laughs> you know before I do this I think we've talked about this before but I'm a big fan of Keith Sykes He's a great songwriter, and a lot of people know him. I think he's from Tennessee originally, but I'm not sure. And uh, he wrote a song called Country Morning Music that the uh, first time I heard it, it was Guy Clark doing it in that, that documentary, Heartburn Highways. And, uh, of course, he's doing it at the kitchen table there, and they're all hammered. They're all, you know, pretty half cut at that point. They're all pretty drunk. And uh, But he's singing this song, and there's a Hey Darling refrain in there. We go to hey, hey, darling, mind what you find. Come on over and see me sometime. Mm -hmm. And he kind of does that over a few times for the refrain, and I thought, man, that's kind of cool. And that's where I, I think, kind of got the idea for the whole Hey, Darling chorus of Blacktop. But of course, it's an obscure song, so not a lot of people know it. And the first person to ever call me out on it was actually Steve Earle uh, at a green room, I think. I was playing a, opening up for him in Chicago at the City Winery. And uh, he goes, that blacktop song, man, that's pretty good. Thanks, Steve. Oh, thanks, man. You know, Steve likes to talk a lot. And uh, we were chatting about it, and he, he goes, Keith Sykes, Country Morning Music, like without blinking. And I'm like, oh, you got me, man. You call me. You call me out on my shit. And he goes, oh, that's a good song. If you're going to steal from anybody, that's not a bad guy to steal from. Something like that. You know? <laughs> but anyways, I'll play it now. <laughs> Sunshine beating down a good time, moonlight raising from the grave, string band playing worn out, honky tonks, pretty young thing going dancing in the rain. High heel lady spitting at the neck of Jacks, businessman with a needle and a spoon. I owed it chewing on a cigarette, pack of young boys going howling at the moon. Hey, darling, sleeping on the black top. Hey, darling, running through the trees, honey. Hey, darling, leaving for the next town. That's when my sense catches up with me. Crash on the number four, two witnesses blowing up high. Not sure whose will be done. Call me a sinner for wondering why. Hey, darling, sleeping on the black top. Hey, darling, running through the trees, honey. Hey, darling, leaving for the next town. That's in my sense catches up with me. sweeter in this town could it be it's the same as the last I swear I seen your face elsewhere before just as familiar as a bottle and a glass hey darling sleeping on the black top hey darling running through the trees honey hey darling leaving for the next town that's in my sense catches up with me hey darling sleeping on the black top hey darling Running through the trees, honey. Hey, darling, leave for the next town. That's in my sense, catches up with me. That's the money maker, man. 
<laughs> it's good to have one of those. Start to think I can't watch a movie without hearing that. Damn <laughs> me, you and me both, man. I'm tired of it. Check something. <laughs> what do you think? You got time for maybe one more? Yeah, we'll do us one more. Uh, can you, if you can get through it. I know you said it, you don't play it a whole lot. It's one that me and Travis were talking about. He said he, he's heard you do it twice. Oh, God. Quit smiling over there. <laughs> I know exactly what it is. <clears throat> I'll see how much of this I can recall. Because I love you. I love you too. <laughs> oh. Leave them lights as they are and keep your clothes on. I've had more than my fill of whiskey and women and good hearted villains, but there's a wickedness in me still. Leave that gun locked away, locked away, boy. Well, you know you're an angry young man Going in town with six rounds You're bound to be hell bound That house you got's built on the sand I've been living on the sand Don't take much to guide my hand Hard from promised land on sand. Living on the sand don't take much to guide my hand. Far from promised land. On the sand. That's all I can really recall. First time in a long time for that one. Travis, we can make that three times now, can't we? <laughs> <It is. laughs> I've, I've said it before, you know. About what? He's sitting there over there going like, what a half-assed version. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's necessarily a bad song, but you know. Some of them just, uh, don't do all some of them just, they don't uh, stand the test of time like others, kind of like I was saying before. I can't help it. It's just, you know, I'm allowed to not like them because they're mine. <laughs> so I try to explain to people all the time and sometimes they don't get it. But I'm allowed to not like some of the ones I've written because I wrote them. Like I said, friends, if you're watching this, uh, really hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure, sure you have and everything like that, but. Like I said, when I thought the podcast was getting taken down, I talked to Coder and he said, you have to find a way to continue doing things. And with podcasts, they're tricky because there's no like legislation for podcasts. Now with YouTube, if you put something on there they don't want on there, they're just going to not let you do it. But with podcasts, sometimes when you don't realize you're doing something wrong, I guess you can be. So if you all have liked the video show so far, you can really thank Coder because without his, uh, you know, his motivation and stuff, you know, I... I just didn't know what to do, so brother, I really appreciate that. All I did was give you a little kick in the butt when I felt like you needed it, man. That's uh, and some most of the time that's all you need, I think. And uh, you, uh, I think you already knew uh, the best way to, you know, approach the situation, and I was just there to support however I can. So I always appreciate it. That's all there is to it, man. It, uh, you all know how great Coder's music is. But as good as his music is, I mean, he's ten times over a, a better person. And I've known him for uh, since he was 19. I mean, I was. It's been probably about six, seven years, something like it. And uh, how old are you? Now? Well, you're ten years younger than me, so you're 25. Five, yeah. You're going to turn 26. Mm -hmm. So I've known him for six plus years, and he's like a like a brother to me. When I say old oh, brother Coder Wall, I'm not just saying that he is like a brother to me he means world to me and uh, 
I just appreciate y'all watching this one. Like I said, if you enjoy this show, it probably might be the first time you've seen it. Check the other shows out. I got a lot of good stuff coming your way. But like always, brother, I just want to know how much I love you. And uh, you've always supported me and always had my back. And I'm going to shut up before I get off. I'm a little emotional. But I, in more ways, not just with music, in more ways than, than a lot of folks know. Things you shows you've done for me and things you've done to... I mean, my house looks completely different because you played my anniversary show. We was able to put siding on my house and replace windows and doors and everything. And not you didn't just make a difference in my life, but in my family's life and stuff. And, and it, uh, like I said, you're my brother, and I love you to death. And let's try to, to not make it two years to the next one. You bet, man. Because right, you're you're somebody <laughs> I think of you about every damn day, and. Uh, there's so much stuff in this old barn and grill, which I'll show you some stuff later that uh, that I bought because I thought of you or seen something made me think of you and stuff. And this whole room right now is folks that that mean the world to me and folks I love. And it means a lot to me not just to have you here, but to have so many people that uh, have been so important to me over the years, kind of gathered together to kind of get to witness and experience this. So, like I said, brother, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. Pretty there, buddy. <laughs> Just a bunch of assholes sitting around yeah. talking shit, really. John Brown. Well, I am crying over here, y'all. You know? <laughs> trying to cover it up a little bit. <laughs> but y'all take it easy and you have you a good one. And uh, we'll be back with you next Wednesday, good Lord's willing. And I always say, as long as the 12 pole creek don't rise, and we about had that happen. <laughs> but Fallon told me, she said, uh, she said, What are you going to do if it starts getting high? I said, I'm going to go down with the ship. I said, I ain't leaving. All right, Zawada, I'm gonna stay with it. But y'all take it easy. We'll see you hey. next week. Ow. Ow. Oh, oh, friend. Trisha McAuley. Hope that's how I'm pronouncing your name. You are the winner. I'll message you and send me your address. The clock's called the same. Time sure does fly by when you're having fun. In other words, you mean we've been here about as long as we're welcome? Yeah, I reckon it's about time to get a satchel and go, hey? That's right. Well, hell, friends, as long as old 12 Pole Creek don't rise too high on me here, I'll be back with you this upcoming Wednesday for a brand new episode of the Old Soul Video Show. If you like what you've seen this evening and you ain't already done it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turn the little bell notifications on so you know exactly when I upload it, like I said, every Wednesday. If you like the video, give her a like. I love hearing what you think about it, so leave me a comment. If you comment me your name and where you're from, hell, you never know, we might be saluting you next week. Hell, friends, if you ain't familiar with the Old Soul Radio Show, you can listen to my podcast every Friday. You can listen directly over at wbwalker.com. You can listen on your Apple device on the podcast app, or you can listen on your Android device over there on the old Stitcher app. But hell, wbwalker.com forward slash stores where you can go to uh, check out my wares. Patreon.com forward slash Old Soul Radio Show is where you can make a monthly pledge and help out here with the podcast and the video show. Now with every pledge, you unlock a post that has a link to this old camera up here in the barn and grill. Now it streams 24-7. If you want to be a fly on the wall and check her out, there you go. If you want to see what I'm listening to, come on in and join me. Now friends, you can find me on the Facebooks at facebook.com forward slash Old Soul Radio Show. I'm on the Instagram, it's the Old Soul Radio Show. I'm on the Twitter at Old Soul Radio. But friends, I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule here once again to join me here in, I guess, West Virginia for another mighty fine, another mighty fine broadcast of the Old Soul Video Show. Y'all be good to one another, love one another, take care of one another. And like I said, the good Lord's willing, I'll be back with you next Wednesday for a brand new episode here of the Old Soul Video Show. Oh.